Welcome to First Baptist Church. <laughs> You've seen a couple of our videos and you know that we're a small church. Let me just show you around for a little bit. Uh, obviously I'm standing behind the pulpit where our pastor will bring the Sunday services. And throughout the church you'll find personal touches of every one of the members. This, for instance, was a gift to our pastor to control the speaking before services. Our members like to talk and have fun and adore fellowship together. So one of our members bought our pastor this as an attention grabber. Join me as I show you our church and tell you a little bit about our members. Here in First Baptist Church, we do a few things. We have Operation Christmas Child from Samaritan's Purse. And I know that a bunch of you just went, what is that? So let me explain. Operation Christmas Child is a thing where you take and put gifts inside shoeboxes, like this little stuffed animal and a football. These gifts will go into a shoebox. Shoebox will then come here on National Collections Week to a drop-off location much like our church. The drop-off location will then collect the boxes, put them in cartons. And National Collections Week is generally the third week of November. During that week, every drop-off location around the country will be open. These shoe boxes go to children in third world countries, and these children get one box their entire life. There's that many kids that don't have boxes, that don't get presents on Christmas. And while we may not get these gifts to the children on Christmas, it is still something for them to open. And something as simple as this football can change a child's life. Operation Christmas Child has been here at this church for 14 years. And we've been doing it, and we will do it. This is yet another way that our little church tries to give back to the community. Welcome to one of our Sunday School Rooms. Here in this room you'll find joy, you'll find sadness, you will find heated debates that spark everyone's interest. Our Sunday School teacher does a wonderful job of sharing the Word of God, bringing in other opinions and other ideas of things. This room is a room where we can come together as a family and show that while we may not always agree, we still do love each other. <laughs> and I remember one time I was sitting in here listening to our Sunday school teacher talk and our uh, music director went, no, wait a minute, I don't quite understand that. And one of the other ladies sitting next to me goes, well, neither do I. Can you explain it a little bit more? And you know what our Sunday school teacher did? He explained it a little bit more. This is a place for questions. This is a place to find your answers. And if you have questions that you want answers to, please feel free to contact us and get your answers. Welcome to the pastor's office. In the pastor's office, you'll find many personal touches. Our pastor loves dusters. He has three or four of these little models just sitting around his office. You will find books that our pastor uses every week to prepare for a sermon. You will find trains. You will find sailboats. Our pastor loves these things. And you'll even find over here on the wall he has a calendar of German Shepherds. Because he has a German Shepherd. Our pastor is a person just like me and you. And our pastor works very hard to bring the message to us on Sunday. He brings it straight from the Bible. And this room is where he studies. This room is where he pulls from his many books to find answers. And in this room, 
You are free to ask any question of him. Even down to, why do you have a yellow highlighter on the desk? Our pastor will answer your questions, and our pastor will not be afraid to. And if you turn and look on that wall over there, you'll find his diplomas. He's an educated man. He's a well-schooled man. And a man that loves Christ. And a man that shares that love every Sunday morning with us. Welcome to the library. This is one of my favorite places in the church. One of our members decided she wanted to start a library in our church so people could bring in books. And they could read them. They could check them out. Just like a real library. And we have books full of stories, full of tragedy, full of love, full of beautiful things that happen and then resolve themselves. We have many of these books. We have the Bible on cassette. And we have a lot of, of other things on cassette as well. This is my favorite place because you can come in here, you can pick up a book, and you can unwind. It's a peaceful, calm place within the church. And it's a beautiful place. A place to find answers. Welcome to the Fellowship Hall. This is another place that is a versatile room. We have the friendship quilters that come in every Monday, and as their name says, there's a bunch of ladies that come into the church and quilt for three hours. They enjoy their time here, and uh, it's a beautiful place. This is also the place that we use for extra seating when we need it. This is a place that we use for the fellowship dinners the carry-in dinners or potluck dinners, depending on where you're at. And I told you about personal touches around this church. If you look at the wall behind me, one of our members made that wall. She painted it, she took all the pictures, she put it all together. There are personal touches throughout this building. Not just here in the fellowship hall or on the pulpit for, my, for our pastor. Our fellowship hall is a place of joy place of fun, a place where stories get told, and a place that we can learn about each other. One of our members is a racer. She's a drag racer. She's a lot of fun. She has many stories. You'll get to hear some of them at some point. We have many veterans in our church, and they share their stories as well. The Fellowship Hall is just that, a place to fellowship a place to enjoy the company of others, and a place to show who you really are. The baptistry of our church, and most churches will have one of these. Um, it's a place where we signify the rebirth, the birth into the family of Christ. Um, many church, well, churches will have a mural behind their baptistry, much like the one that's behind me right now a river flowing from everything that is dead to everything that is alive. It signifies your outward statement when you become a Christian. You, you are baptized, you are brought in to the new, new church, to the new life of being a Christian. And honestly, the baptism doesn't do anything. It's actual water back here. We have a chlorine tab even. And we have a heater. There's nothing about this that is special. It's all within the heart. This is even such a place that games are played here. We, we had a youth member who was hiding. <laughs> we were playing a game, they were hiding in here. And this glass had to be replaced because he pole vaulted over the top of it and broke it. We're still not quite sure how, but it happened. This is a building. There's nothing special about the building. It's a building. The church are the members, are the people who come together, who share their stories, who share their love, who have been in this baptistry, 
who have been baptized into the family of Christ. You may not have been baptized here. They may not have ever been baptized, but that, does that, that doesn't make him any less of a Christian. The church is the people. And I would like for you to meet our people, to meet our church. We have some beautiful souls here. We have some loving people here. You'll hear their stories. You'll hear who they are. And you'll see that it wasn't just one thing that brought them to Christ or one thing that brought them to this church. It was many things. And honestly, it was many things that brought us here as well. This is a lovely church. And I would love for you to continue this tour with me. Every church has one of these rooms. Every church has one of these rooms that they would rather it doesn't exist. For our church, that's the room behind me. And it's not that we rather it doesn't exist because there's something horrible behind the doors. It's we rather it doesn't exist because we don't know how to fix it. And we're just kind of lost on it. So instead of trying to explain to you why this door remains closed and we don't really use this room very often, I'll just show you. Welcome to SpongeBob Jail. And even in here, it smells like low tide. We don't know why, it just does. The stripes are uneven, every one of those stripes is crooked. And Every board and every windowsill in there is probably crooked as well. But it's just one of our many rooms that we have here at the church. SpongeBob Jail. That's what it's been coined. And every church has one. This church also showed me love and compassion. We had a young man walk into the building of this, this very church. And he walked in with the express intent, and he wanted it very quickly. He wanted us to kick him out. I was a youth leader at the time, and he was one of my youth group, and I just let my church take care of it. These people took him in, brought him close, and everything he did, they loved him for it. Even the time that he dressed up on Halloween like a woman, walked into the church and made so many remarks that lesser people would have been offended by. You will get to meet these church members. You will get to hear their stories, as I've said. And you will get to see why this young man is now a Christian and why this young man to this day apologizes to me because of the things he did. You'll get to see and hear stories about the youth group that we had, the uh, doors that they ripped off the hinges, the pipe toilet paper fights that we had. Uh, the, there's a lot of fun stories that happened in this building. But there's also a lot of other stories that happen in this building. But the stories that I want to focus on are the stories of acceptance. Our pastor was coming back into this sanctuary one day during a potluck dinner, walking through from over there. And in here by himself sat a young man from the Middle East. He didn't tell our pastor where he was from, but he sat in the pews behind me and he was praying to God. He was praying to God for acceptance and he was praying to God that the people of this country would see that he was not a monster. This man found love and compassion in our church for a short time before he moved to another town. And we heard stories from him, wonderful stories that I will tell you at another date. This church 
like it says on our Instagram, is full of love and compassion. We are a small church with a big heart. We'd like you to join us. We have the pastor's sermons up every, every Monday on Facebook. And every week we'll upload a new video. Whether it be question and answer with the pastor, or testimonials from our church members, or stories of... Now normally you wouldn't think of this, but our church does something a little bit different. Every Halloween, we pull out this guy. And we have him on every year. No! Do not go further! It's a trap! You know not what lies beyond! Beware! And what we do is we have a Halloween party. We tell ghost stories. And we have everybody in the community come through. We have skeletons walk into the church. We have devils and angels walk into the church. We have had many things walk into this church during Halloween. We've been told ghost stories about this church. There is a a small joke that runs between myself and the music director and his wife. Every Sunday we come into this church and every once in a while there is something different. There is something moved. And we don't know if it's just somebody messing with us because you never know who comes into the church during the week. Or if it really is a poltergeist. Either way, they're in the building and they're welcome. Will you join us as we find out what lies beyond? <laughs> Did you quit recording? <laughs> Welcome to okay. First Baptist Church. Today we'll be doing something else today. <laughs> Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video. Also follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Have a wonderful day, friends.